So here's our audio demo. This is with our new release product called Akita Pico. It's the smallest neural network that'll do temporal event-based neural networks. Tell them that again. Temporal event-based neural networks. <laughs> Hello, IPXers. We are yet again at Embedded World, Texas, Austin, LLMs. That's what we're gonna be talking today with Todd from Brainchip. Now, first question I'm gonna ask him is about legacy. Because as you know, what we're looking for is replacing anything that you have legacy and bringing it in disruptive. And I think Brainchip have got a lot to say on that subject. So Todd, if you didn't exist, not you personally, because <laughs> that would be a silly interview, what would people be doing if they didn't have Brainchip? So right now what's happening, all the large language models, everything's ran in the cloud. Us at Brainchip is really trying to bring designs to the edge without trying to make large models small. It's a way of taking models that are meant for the edge, low power, very efficient, designed from the bottom up to be extremely efficient and productive at the edge. Right, so are you sat, so LLM sits, sits in the cloud, doing all its learning, doing all its, all its adapting. Normally then that sends a model back down to the edge and the edge goes looking for what it's supposed to be doing. Yeah. You're saying that you're doing that actually with your chip on the edge. So what we're trying to do is come at it from the edge constraints. Right. You know, right now, if you have a data center model, you have unlimited memory, unlimited compute, you're taking a model to run all this object detection at, a, you know, 100 FPS. So what we're doing is saying, hey, at the edge, you have a really small device. Maybe it's a doorbell, maybe it's a clock, maybe it's an industrial IoT design. And you're trying to, you know, say, hey, I have these constraints. Instead of taking this large model and trying to squeeze it into this box, yep. it's yep. going to be overpowered. We're designing it, taking those constraints into mind. So we run these neural networks that are very, very efficient. Right, right. So today, how would they be solving you know, in that in that very constrained edge environment? Just tell it how it is. How what are their options today? If Brainchip didn't exist, with that idea of getting LR models onto your chip, what would they be doing? So right now, if you look at some of the uh, large language models, you have Llama 2 and Mamba, 7 billion, 70 billion, you know, you're trying to use ChatGPT to know everything. And what we're doing is we're saying, hey, if you're on the edge, we can do a model 300 million parameters to about a billion parameters for a specific use case. For example, we have a demo up here that's focused on appliances. So if I look at appliances only, and let's just say I have a refrigerator, dishwasher, or a microwave oven, and I wanna build an LLM model specifically for that, I consume all the PDFs, user manual, installation guides, reference manuals, consume all those in, and now I have a model that can be really small and efficient only for those machines. And it lowers my training cost, it lowers my use costs, and it you know is really efficient for economical reasons for power on the edge. And today they'd be having to not do that, but using some standard off the shelf MCU. Is that what you're saying? No, what they're doing right now is everything's talking to the cloud. This everything, is the right, everything so, goes so, up to the cloud. So the so. absolute disruptive moment is if you didn't have brain chip, you couldn't do the things that you're, there wouldn't be another way of doing that. Exactly. This is the only way of doing that. Right. And what's happening is every time you go to the cloud, I'm going to ask you a question. Who's making money? The cloud. The cloud. <laughs> and the training people in the cloud. It's not the people making the appliances. Yeah. So they can get their share of the money by reducing their overall cost, having an architecture that's specifically modeled so it's really efficient at the edge, whether it's an appliance, test equipment, where it's an in-vehicle, I don't have to go to the cloud for everything, and it just reduces the overall cost of the product right. being used. So let's just to, cl to clarify that, what you're saying is the learning is being done, the actual learn learning is being done at the edge because your brain chip, chip has all, those, all that data that you just described, the data about how the fridge works and all that kind of stuff, that's actually sitting on your chip. So it's doing its learning, it's bringing the data in, and none of that's happening, having to go backwards and forwards via the cloud to do that. Exactly, because I haven't trained it to know Shakespeare or what the weather is like in Texas and all this other stuff. It's only focused on the information relative to the devices that that neural network's running on the edge. Right, right. Okay, do you want to look at this demo? Sure. So what we're doing right here, I have essentially LLMs on the edge, and if, are you familiar with RAG? 
retrievement augmented generation. So it's I, gonna- I, I'm not, but they will be. Okay, so what we're doing is we have these three appliances. So if I look at like a refrigerator and I bring this in oops, and I have an assistant that says, hey, what do you need help with? Okay, I have a few questions that it's actually, I can ask it. And what it does is it goes out and it says, okay, here's the answer. But let's, let me show you what's running in the background. So if I go into expert mode, it's actually gonna show you what it did. So I have the refrigerator and I ask it this question. So when you ask it the question, basically it comes back with the information that I consumed on the PDFs of the user guide, yep, reference yep, potential and all yep, that. Yep. It says, based on the question you ask, here's the relevancy score, hires better, of the question you ask in the sections related to your question. And then after it figured out the question, what it does is it generates a context prompt based on the question that you asked. And then when you ask Akita, there's the answer it spits out. Right. So all that's running, you know, you saw it run in real time, really so, fast. So if it's learning, which is the whole definition of what you're doing, most of the time, that's going to be able to answer the question based on the data that you've given it. Yes. User behavior changes though, doesn't it? It changes geographically and it changes culturally. Mm -hmm. So how uh, the true definition of AI is that it would be learning as it goes along. So how do you deal with, I mean, would you get over there updates that say, I didn't know the answer to that question. It then goes back to the cloud and it learns what would happen there. So it's taken all the PDFs of the consumables and created a vector database. Yeah. Okay. So I'm rereading that information as a user manuals, reference guides, service manuals, all this stuff gets updated. So I'm always having more and more content, but it's really driving right. for the edge. So it can yeah, yeah. No, I understand. So, so there still is over the air. So, so there is still absolutely cloud interaction on, so, on the training side. Yes. I still train it as I would normally. This is on the inference side on yes. the edge. So yeah. Now I have a small model on the edge that runs any one of these use cases and whether it's, you know, appliances, whether it's car TVs, you know, I'll, I'll ask you a question. You have a dishwasher. How many, how many of those buttons do you actually push? Usually it's one on go. That's it. Right. So, but this man it, just asked me if I fill up my own dishwasher, but wouldn't it be nice if you said, okay, Hey, dishwasher, how, you know, I only have half a load. Which buttons do I push? And it says, boom, boom, boom. And it does it for I'm trying you. to train my son to do that, but yeah. Okay. Yes. He's not going to, no, I don't I, get anywhere I with that. No one in the world uses more than one button on the dishwasher. <laughs> I know. It's totally true. All those settings. I don't know. What the, what that, that's a Normal topic. start. Yeah, that's it. That's it. I agree with you. Totally. But if you, but if you had a nice interactive, this is the actual hardest part yep. of one of these. Once we get this, then we're going to speech to text and text to speech. So it'll be fully automated neural networks uh, for a full pipeline, text to text or speech to speech. Yeah. Yeah. So one last question. Understand everything that's going on. Compute at the edge, learning on the edge, all the data on the chip doing all the interaction, ready to answer all the questions. It sends data back, I'm taking. So how does that work? How do you get involved with, do, do you have a platform where this data goes and you can help the OEM or do they have to do that? Now, so we actually came up with this model. This is what we call a TENS model, Temporal Event Neural Network. So actually- Say that again. Temporal Event Neural Networks. So it's taken the spatial temporal component which is a really efficient way of doing, um, you know, neural networks. Right, right. I don't understand the answer, what, how that answers the question about. Uh, so you don't you, need anything on out there anymore. It's all local. Everything is local. Well, if that's the case, how does my dishwasher talk to his dishwasher? So It's that, not talking to his dishwasher. No, but in terms of learning, in terms of when things change, the data's got to go up to the cloud somewhere. So as it trains the, you know, it, it's just like updating your phone. You're going to update it and it may, it'll probably do it automatically. You won't need to do anything. Right. Okay. It's done by the appliance guys. Right. Okay. Good. Oh yeah. No, I, I realized that. Okay. Good. Okay. okay. Excellent. Well, there we go. So large language models on the edge using brain chip in order that it learns. It's got all the data sitting there waiting to do everything. So the people in the cloud, those dirty little rotten scoundrels making all that money out of your clever ideas. You no longer need to do that because everything's going to be done at the edge.
Exactly. Thanks, Todd. All right, thank you. Appreciate your time. Are you with my engineers, eh?